Hello, welcome, welcome to my live stream here at Senora Sarah. If you are here in the live, please comment in the chat, tell us where you're from, and I'll be asking you lots of questions throughout the live today so that you can engage with me. Let me know uh, how's it going for you in your journey learning Spanish. <clears throat> also, if you are feeling the music or not, like if it's too loud, please let me know. I'd love to know that so I can adjust to your needs. Thank you so much for coming today. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most common frequently asked questions when it comes to learning Spanish. And I think this could really apply to learning any language. So if you're learning any other language, then that'll also work. So I just want to bring up um, a little slideshow I've made for you. Let's see it. Also, if you're if you are not here live, but you're watching the replay, comment down below. Let us know where you're from. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about learning Spanish. Enrich your life through learning Spanish. Learning Spanish has certainly changed my life. And here's a few things about me. I have lived in Mexico since 2014. Most of that time I've been in Mexico City. And if you have any questions about Mexico City, I would love to know what you have to ask. Um, keep the questions, of course, nice, friendly. Um, I don't really do political or social commentary here on the channel about, I mean, like social issues. I'm going to get some lotion here. But I'm happy to answer questions about your trip to Mexico City, safety tips, where to visit, where to eat, that kind of thing. So let me know if you have any questions on that. I've also been teaching foreign language online since 2014. So for part of that time, I taught English as a second language. And for the past um, almost three years now, I've been teaching Spanish as a second language. So I have lots of experience teaching foreign languages. I've also learned two foreign languages myself. I've learned English and Amer um, I learned English, yeah. I learned English, but that wasn't my second language. I learned Spanish as a second language and I learned American Sign Language pretty well. I never got to be super good at American Sign Language, but also stick around because about halfway through today's presentation, I'm gonna be sharing a special discount later. I'm gonna, um, going to share a discount for my kids Spanish classes over on OutSchool. And if you are interested in kids Spanish classes, check out the link right here on the screen, outschool.com slash teachers slash Senora Sarah. Over there, you can see the classes that I'm offering either currently or in the future if you're watching this on the replay. And it's a pretty great discount. So make sure you stick around. So let's jump right into the questions. Some of the top questions. What are one of the people Blah, 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 blah. One of the things people commonly ask is, what are the most difficult things about learning Spanish? I want to know what you think, first of all. <clears throat> what is the hardest thing for you about learning Spanish? If you're here live, tell us over in the live chat. That way I can comment and help you out on that. What are the hardest things for you about learning Spanish? Tell us over in the chat, or if you're watching the replay, comment below this video. I would love to help you out. So... Some of the most difficult things about learning Spanish, I'm going to jump right into a doozy, and that is there are more verb tenses in Spanish than there are in English. And I put one, oops, sorry, I just put my, just moved the camera, I to do that. <laughs> I've put an example of one of the crazy verb tenses here on the slide. This is probably the one that gives people like the biggest headache. It's called subjunctive, and that's right under where it says more verb tenses here. In Spanish, this sentence is quiero que sepas. Well, phrase. It's, I want you to know. Quiero que sepas. But that second verb, sepas, that's in the subjunctive tense. That's a verb tense that we don't have in English. And it it's whenever you change the subject of the sentence, we get to like completely change the verb tense. So that's, that's a real headache for a lot of Spanish learners. But if you're just getting started learning Spanish, um, don't worry. This is something you'll probably hit maybe second or third year, especially if you're in like a traditional study environment. Um, it's not something you really worry about at first. Another thing that's really confusing is the second thing down here, por and para. Both of these words can roughly translate to for, um, like for a length of time or sometimes like para siempre, forever. Uh, but it's it can be confusing for learners to know when to use which one. And to be honest, sometimes I, I still get tripped up on it. And also, um, there's so many accents 
in the Spanish language because Spanish is spoken in so many different countries. And so it can be a little bit tricky um, trying to understand all the different accents. There are some that are a little bit more neutral, but there are some that are pretty hard to understand. Um, just a reminder, if you're here live, comment in the chat. Let us know uh, where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions about Spanish, I'd love to answer it. That's one of the great things about live is that I can answer your questions, right? So that's some of the most difficult things about learning Spanish. That's one of our first questions that a lot of people have. So some of the most difficult things right there. Let's pop on over to the second one. A lot of people want to know, how long does it realistically take to learn Spanish? What do you think? How long does it realistically take to learn Spanish? Pop a comment in the chat or down right below this video. And this is a difficult question to answer. Um, first of all, if you're seeing claims out there that you can learn Spanish in three months, uh, uh, I would be leery of those things. <laughs> so how long it takes you to learn Spanish realistically depends on a lot of things. First of all, where are you studying? The reason I say that is, are you in an immersive environment or are you like I was in a, a small town in the United States with nobody around you that speaks Spanish in a, per, in a monolingual family, monolingual perhaps English speaking family, then it's going to take you longer. Um, so that's one thing we have to consider. The second thing is I want to ask, how often are you studying Spanish? That's going to affect uh, how long it's going to take you to reach fluency. Um, if you're studying a little bit every single day, you're going to get the fluency a whole lot faster. And the third question I have to ask you is, do you like the language? That's a lot of, that's a question that a lot of people don't consider, but I've definitely seen in my 10 years of experience as a teacher and a language learner myself, um, that affects things a lot. <laughs> that affects things a lot. For example, my husband is not a native English speaker. He understands a lot of English, um, but he's not flu a fluent English speaker by any stretch of the imagination. And he doesn't like the language. And that really affects how quickly or slowly he learns it. It really does. So if you like Spanish, if, if language is interesting to you, I think you're going to learn a lot, a little bit faster than other people. And then I also wanted to tell you a little bit about my experience. Before I do that, though, I want to invite you to answer this question in the chat or in the comments. Tell us, how long have you been studying Spanish? Let me know. All right. And I know that's a loaded question. So people often ask me that question. How long did it take me to learn to speak Spanish fluently? And uh, once again, it's kind of a loaded question. It's difficult to answer that question. Um, I studied Spanish on my own back in the United States for 10 years before I moved to Mexico. And it, yeah, <laughs> it took a really long time. Um, that's because I was in, I mean, I'm from a monolingual English speaking family. I was in a community that was only really English speaking. I did not have the opportunity to be in that immersive situation like I am now here in Mexico, right? So, in that 10 years, I got to the point where I could, like, for example, listen to the radio and understand a lot of the commentary from the um, radio show hosts. But I never, I wasn't at the point where I felt real comfortable just having a full conversation. After those 10 years, I moved to Mexico City and I was able to c communicate with people, but I was still very, very nervous to do so. Um, and then once I moved over to... Sorry, I was just checking the, <laughs> the chat messages. Once I moved to a small town in Mexico where nobody spoke any English whatsoever, I felt like I really progressed to fluency in about a year. But that was like, I had to speak Spanish. I was forced to just to, just to survive, literally. Like I had to talk to people just to go buy stuff <laughs> and talk to my friends. Um, and so I would say if you're in an immersive environment, it's probably going to take about a year. But that's if also if you are active, like you are talking to people, you are stumbling and fumbling over your words and trying to get that out, to get that language out. Um, by the way, I just wanted to let you know, I have another video all about Spanish uh, study tips. Some of the, oh, they're, it's called They're Lying to You About Speaking Spanish. I'll put a link down below so you can check that video. You want to see some of the the biggest lies, the biggest myths busted about learning Spanish. So I just want to hop over to the chat. If you are here viewing, um, please comment over in the chat. We've got a 
comment from a from ej me gusta aprender español lo enseñas bien gracias he says i like to learn spanish you teach it well thank you thank you so much what a nice comment it was really nice all right so how long does it take to learn spanish well it depends on your situation and also once again let us know in the comments how long have you been learning spanish i'm going to take just a second to get a little drink of my iced coffee here this is uh, actually more like chocolate milk with some uh, coffee in it but you know Go ahead and get a sip of your coffee. We're going to keep on going with some of our questions. Our next commonly frequently asked question is, how can I practice Spanish daily? As a Spanish teacher, I do encourage you to practice Spanish every day. Somehow, every single day. And I know that it's not easy to do that every single day, <laughs> a lot of times, right? So here's some of the things that you can do, and here's some of the things that I did. The first thing is you can listen, listen to the radio in Spanish, listen to podcasts in Spanish. When I was learning Spanish and I was at work in a horrible office job that I couldn't stand, um, I was allowed to listen, you know, to my phone, like headphones, listen to the radio or whatever. And I would connect to uh, radio stations in Mexico City and sometimes radio stations in Spain through the internet. And not only the music helped me, but also hearing the radio show host talk really helped me. And I also would jot down some of the things that they would say. Like if I heard an unfamiliar word, I would jot that down and, uh, Even if I didn't understand it, I would just write it down immediately. And then later I could go look it up. The point is I was immersing myself somehow in that environment, right? You've got to get more exposure to the language. And this is something I also um, talk about over in my video about the, the lies they're lying to you about speaking Spanish. Um, you have to get more, more exposure to the language than just, oh, I'm gonna go to class once a week or twice a week or even like if you're in high school or college and you go five days a week it's not enough like you have to get more exposure i'm not saying you have to do like like memorizing vocabulary lists every single day for hours a week i don't even think that's really effective however um i do think you you've got to have exposure even if it's passive exposure remember when we're talking about learning a language we're talking about lots of different skills right we're talking about writing reading, speaking, listening, all of those things. And those skill sets all require different types of practice. Um, and you really do learn if you get more exposure to the language through listening. So listen to the radio, listen to podcasts. One of the podcasts I found that I'm still investigating is called News in Slow Spanish. I was just checking that out a little bit before today's live And I liked it. I liked it for Spanish learners. You could kind of select your level and then you could listen to the news as it says in slow Spanish. What happens is if you try to connect and listen to, not connect, but if you try to listen to like, say your favorite series or your favorite movie in Spanish, if you're not already a really advanced Spanish speaker or at least an intermediate Spanish speaker, you're going to be completely lost because they talk really fast in movies. Uh, comment below if you find this is true. The con I find that they talk really fast, it's difficult to keep up, and I find that a lot of, sorry, a lot of students get discouraged by doing that. So the reason that this is nice, the news in slow Spanish is because they slow it down for you, and you're not feeling like you're constantly like overwhelmed with the <laughs> speed and the amount of information. Um, so I also put watch movies and TV shows. now. Just a little bit of caution. This is definitely if you're more of an intermediate to an advanced Spanish student. Um, that's for sure. But even if you're maybe a little bit more toward beginner, you could give it a shot for a few minutes a day. But make sure you put on subtitles. Um, once again, I'm just trying to get you some more exposure to the language. And something else that I definitely put here is repeat it. Repeat it. Say the words out loud. If you hear something new, say it. Actually say it. I know it's going to feel weird, but please say it out loud. It helps you get those little neurons fired in your firing in your brain. And it helps you to, you know, get that, memorize that. So something I'd like to hear from you, either in the replay, in the comments, or in the live chat right now. Tell us what you've done to practice Spanish and what has worked well for you. 
I've heard some really good um, suggestions and comments recently. Thank you all of for ha all of you out there who have commented on my videos. Somebody mentioned that they like the Pimsleur approach. I've tried that and I think it's really cool. Um, if you like the Pimsleur approach, have you had a particular teacher that you thought was like, yeah, that really cool skill? Um, not a really cool skill, but really good technique for teaching or just a really good teacher. Is there an app that you like? Let us know. Um, all kinds of approaches really do work. So we're just going to take a little coffee break here before we continue on to our next one. Remember, there is a discount code coming we're in the middle of this live stream. So stick around. I am going to share that soon. This is delicious. I mean, it's like I said, chocolate milk with coffee. So it can't not be good, right? <laughs> okay. So we have covered that. Now, another common question is, how many hours a day should I practice Spanish? I don't think you should study Spanish for hours a day. <laughs> so I like to make it attainable and sustainable when I'm helping my students to study a language. And I think this is like any goal that we have in life. I think we all get like gung-ho and excited. I mean, just ask me about my gym and weight loss efforts. Ugh. Um, we all get really excited at first, right? And we're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to study this language for two hours a day. And I saw something on Google that said, if you study for three hours a day, you'll be fluent in six months. I'm like, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Like nobody can study for three hours a day. You, nobody can do that for six months. Like you're going to burn out and you're going to hate it. So please don't do that. Make it attainable and sustainable. So if that means, okay, 30 minutes a day maybe an hour a day. That would be great. I, I tend to think 30 minutes a day is better. And here's why. You don't want to like wear your brain out. When you're learning a language, it's, it's exhausting. Comment below if you agree. Is it exhausting? I mean, I think so. Learning a language is exhausting. And after like 30 minutes, I mean, really, your head hurts. You get that head fog. I felt, remember, like feeling this pressure behind my eyes. It would just, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. And also, you, you've got to give your brain like time to absorb the information. It, just give yourself a little grace, right? So I would say 30 minutes to an hour a day max. Um, I would argue as a professional trained language teacher that it is better for you to practice frequently than like once a week, a real long spurt, right? So maybe if even if that's 15, 15 minutes a day, every single day, I think 30 is better. 15 minutes is a pretty short time. But um, anyway, I hope that answers the question. Just don't burn out, please, please. And don't, don't try to do these marathon runs. It's too, it's too much. So something else I'd like to hear from you about what's the hardest thing for you about learning Spanish? Let me know Did I already asked that question. I might've already asked that question. If I already asked that question, please forget about it. All right. We are approaching up the discount code. Super excited. So this is a screenshot of my classes over on OutSchool. These are only for kids. OutSchool is only for kids. But check out this. Okay, so the whole link is actually right here. But I'm actually going to send you this right now in the chat. So for anybody that's here in the chat, you're going to get this link right now. And if you're watching this as a replay, you can also, um, I'm going to put this over in the uh, comments down below. I'm going to pin this comment, okay? So, is this working? Uh, oh, no. Sorry, I have to send it to you a little bit better. It was a little bit too long. Please, one second. This is a coupon code for $50 off this course. And as you can see, you can see the price of this course here um, for kids, but it is um, about $10 a class and 50 bucks off. Use the coupon code um, in the live chat right now. You can see that. Just click on it. It'll take you right to it or use the coupon code you see on the screen. This is a full immersion class for kids. I've got lots of them starting and this code is good all the way through June, June, 2024. And if you don't, um, if you're watching this later, then comment below when I might have other discounts available. Okay. So just to let you know that's your discount code, 50 bucks off Spanish classes for kids. So let's get right back into the questions. Do language learning apps work? We all know the ones that we're talking about, right? Those apps that claim you can just learn a few minutes a day on your phone. 
Um, let me know your opinion on these in the chat or the comments below. First of all, I want to know what apps, websites, or methods have you used? Do they work for you? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Comment either below this message, this video, or comment in the live in the live chat. I'd love to hear from you. So, here's my professional opinion on language learning apps. Well, annoyingly, it depends on your goal. So, ask yourself, what do you want from your language learning experience? Do you want to learn a few phrases so you can go to Mexico and basically still kind of stay in your little bubble, but basically be able to order a drink or order your tacos or buy a ticket to get into that that museum? Then I would say, yeah, probably a language learning app would work for you. Um, it It'll get you the phrases that you need. You can memorize them quickly and move on with your life. However, if you want to connect with people, reach fluency, and really open your mind, expand your horizons um, with Spanish or any other language, I'm going to say not really. The language learning app is not really going to get you to fluency. It's just going to get you a few phrases that are going to help you out a little bit. Um, by the way, I do see we've got a few people watching live. Thank you so much for coming. I'm excited to have you. Let us know who you are over in the live chat. I would love to say hi to you or answer any questions you have about Spanish or life in Mexico or traveling to Mexico, okay? So let's come on back to the question. I also wanted to mention about language learning apps. Um, when you're talking to people live, like Spanish speakers, there's a lot of variables and a lot of students get discouraged with this. Um, they might be studying really hard and then they go to talk to somebody and they can't understand them. Comment below if this is you, if you've ever experienced this. You're trying to talk to somebody, you can't understand a word they're saying, and suddenly you freeze up and you, you can't say anything and you, oh, it's so stressful. Or you think... Um, Oh, I don't understand. Or you get so discouraged with your your language learning, right? You think, oh, I don't really speak Spanish. Uh, listen, there's a lot of variables when speaking with a live native speaker in Spanish. First of all, uh, where's that person from? What kind of accent do they have? What what kind of Spanish are they speaking, right? There is a, like a general Spanish that the whole world speaks, but then there's a lot of slang that people use from different countries and they're tossing in there. And I'm going to be honest, look, I've spoken Spanish for 20 years and there's a lot of things that people will say if they're from different countries and they're throwing in their slang from like Chile or Argentina or Peru, Colombia. I don't know what they're saying. My husband's Mexican. He doesn't know what they're saying sometimes. So don't be too hard on yourself if that's you. If you're struggling a little bit to understand some native speakers, just know that it depends on the person. Uh, are they speaking correctly? Or are they kind of like speaking really sloppy Spanish? Do they have a really thick accent? Or are they just tossing in a lot of slang? Um, there's a lot of variables when you're speaking with live people. All right. So language learning apps can help you in some circumstances, but they're not always the best solution. Let's pop on to our next question. How difficult is it to learn Spanish? A lot of people want to know, how difficult is it to learn Spanish? First of all, I would like to hear from you. Comment in the live chat or down below this message. How do you think learning Spanish stacks up to other languages? Do you think it's easier? You think it's harder? You think it's pretty much the same? Um, let us know down below this message. So, Statistically speaking, they say that Spanish is one of the easiest languages for native English speakers. However, I don't really care about statistically speaking. <laughs> um, your experience with learning Spanish is really going to be up to you. It's very subjective, right? There are people that have an aptitude for learning language where they're going to say, oh yeah, Spanish is easy. Oh, I Sidebar, I disagree. I don't think any language is easy. But, you know, some people think that Spanish is easy. So, And some people um, are going to think it's really, really hard. I have some students that they're smart, but they just don't have that natural talent for learning language. And they really struggle with the pronunciation and things, you know. So it really depends on your personal opinion, your personal experience. If you're a speaker of another language in the Romance family, if you're a speaker of Italian or Portuguese or French, you might find that Spanish is pretty easy for you. Let me know your experience down below. But yeah, I mean, one of the great things about learning Spanish is at least it uses the same alphabet as English. If English is your native language, at least it's the same alphabet. 
Um, the pronunciation of Spanish is actually easier than English once you get the hang of the vowel sounds because the vowels are always the same in every single word with few exceptions. And English, if you think about it, is a real headache when it comes to this. So how difficult is it to learn Spanish? Well, you let me know. I'm going to take a second just to remind you all, you can see at the top of the screen here, we've got my Instagram handle. If you want to reach out to me for Spanish classes for adults, or if you have questions about Mexico City or you're interested in touring Mexico City, check us, check me out over on um, senora.sara on Instagram. Um, you can reach me a little bit easier there. You can also comment below this video, but sometimes it's easier like to direct message me there on, at senora.sara on Instagram. So let's come back to the material that we're talking about here. All right, this question is a good one. Why should I make the effort to learn Spanish when I could use Google Translate? Let me know your thoughts down below as well or in the live chat. What do you think about this new mm, news, I don't know, age that we're in of all this technology? Yeah, you can use Google Translate and I think it's an amazing tool. But what do you guys think? What do you think about AI getting involved in our language learning experience? Um, I have my thoughts on it, but I'd like to know what you think. So the picture here is me and my dear husband. This was on our, our wedding day. Um, in Mexico, you have to get married at the courthouse before your traditional religious ceremony. So that's what you're seeing here. We also had a religious ceremony, but um, that's neither here nor there. And this is the one of the main reasons that I say it's worth the effort to learn Spanish because that's where you get the, the relationships with Spanish speakers. And of course, in this picture, we're talking about a romantic relationship, but it doesn't only have to be a romantic relationship. You get the opportunity to have so many more friends and your, your horizons are just so open. I mean, think about how many millions of people only speak Spanish in this world. That's one of the main reasons why I decided to learn Spanish. There's so many people that speak Spanish. I mean, it's like half of the planet. <laughs> I mean, maybe not literally, but when you look at the map, I mean, this, the countries, the, the the sheer geographical area that's covered by native Spanish speakers is massive. Um, and so you get the opportunity to cultivate so many more friendships. And also that brings us into the second point on this slide, and that is you get a new view of the world. You don't get that through AI, through a robot translating. Like your whole way of thinking is opened up to another possibility. I always tell my students, when you learn a new language, you learn a new way to think. And it really does change you. It changes you forever. And it changes you for the better. You know, you get to see things from another perspective. You get to consider a completely new way of viewing the world. And it's very exciting. Um, you also, I can't actually see what this says. Let me see. Oh, I can make it bigger. Okay. <laughs> Um, also, the your your travel experiences are completely unparalleled when you learn Spanish. So, sure, you can come to Mexico. You can you can hire me as your tour guide, which would be nice. <laughs> but you are not going to have the same experience as if you can come and as if you were if you were able to come and speak Spanish yourself. If you were able to talk to the people, order your own food ask the waiter at the restaurant all those questions um ask the people around you like if you get lost you can ask for help you need to go to the doctor you can talk to the doctor um you can talk to your uber driver you can have i mean you just you get so much more it's so enriching and it's so much more than just using google translate please just realize the amazing opportunity you have in front of you so as i get another sip of my chocolate milk with a little bit of coffee in it i would like to know down below or in the live comments. Why are you interested in learning Spanish? Please let me know as I take a sip. All right, that was delicious. Love to know why. Why do you wanna learn Spanish? We are approaching the end of our conversation. Let me just take a real quick look, okay? Aha, two more questions. What is the best method? People ask me this all the time because I am a language teacher and a language learner. Um, let's just say hello once again. If you are in the uh, live, just pop us a comment. Let us know who you are. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. So back to the question, what's the best method for learning Spanish? And I put whatever floats your boat. Whatever floats your boat. There are 
arguments for all kinds of different approaches when it comes to learning Spanish. And I have seen people do well with lots of different things. Um, some people like one-on-one -on -one instruction with the teacher. Some people like full immersion. Some people hate that. Some people love Duolingo. Some people love just listening. So there's all sorts of different ways that can be effective for learning Spanish. You might have to try a couple things and see what works for you. Um, but just try something. Just You might even just need to try and see if it works, right? Not necessarily worry about Ooh, which way is the right way. You're really not going to mess up by trying something. You know, there's really no wrong answer here. I would definitely say, as I say on the second point here, please consider your goal. Um, if you, for example, you want to speak, like you want to actually talk to people when you travel to Mexico on vacation, then you're going to have to have some sort of class or opportunity to speak, <laughs> right? Um, just reading poetry in Spanish is not going to get you, excuse me, to the goal of speaking, right? And I always say, the third point here is speak. Please speak. Please, 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 please say the words out loud. Please speak. You have to do that because it's what a lot of courses are lacking. And the only way that you get better at speaking is to just just do it. Just talk, 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 talk. Um, I'd love to know at the bottom here, what is your, uh, in your experience, what are Spanish courses lacking? Maybe you've taken a Spanish class or a course in school or a, an online class. What are these classes lacking? What do you want to see more of in your classes? Let me know in the comments below or in the live chat. I would love to hear that. Just wanted to give you a quick reminder here. We do um, offer Spanish classes. Yes, I'm going to take this off. Um, oh, I just realized we're doing here. <laughs> you guys are looking at my computer the whole time. Isn't that cute? Okay. Well, thank you for your patience um, as we figure out the technical issues here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Maybe I can put it down a bit. No, it's worse. Here. Okay. But look, there's my lotion. Oh, isn't this cute? You guys get to see me figure out my live stream issues. Okay. That's a little bit better. Oh, look at that. Now you get to see me and my mice. Look, I have two. Okay, thanks for your patience. Just a quick reminder, we have Spanish classes. Yes, even for adults, if you're interested in a Spanish class for yourself and you're over the age of 18, uh, check out the comments below. We're going to have a pinned comment with a link for you to get a class with a native speaker. Let's go back to our conversation here about the top questions that people ask about learning Spanish. People often ask, what's the best version of Spanish to learn? Or what's the best kind of Spanish? Should I learn Spanish from Spain or Mexico or Chile or Peru? Which one? Well, I'm going to say a few things about it depends on what you want. And also I'll talk about my preference, but this is just my preference. It doesn't mean this Spanish is better than any other Spanish. It just means this is what I personally like, but it's probably also because of what I'm used to. Okay. So depends on what you want. Once again, are you um, a person from the United States that wants to communicate with people in your area? Well, you're probably going to want to learn Spanish from Mexico, for example, because likely a lot of the people are Mexican because Mexico is the closest Spanish speaking country to the United States. So that's probably the kind that you want. Are you going to be moving to Spain for studying abroad or traveling to Spain? Maybe you should learn the Spanish from Spain. My preference based on accent, clarity, understandability is Mexican Spanish. Mexicans generally have a very clear way of speaking. Um, of course, there's different accents in different regions. Mexico is a huge country, right? But I'm talking about in general. Um, Mexican Spanish is easily understood the world over. Pretty neutral accent. And uh, it's just very understandable. So that covers the main topics for some of the main um, most frequently asked questions about learning Spanish. If you have any other questions about learning Spanish, please let me know. Comment below. I would love to help you out. Um, thank you for joining me today. And I will see you in the next one. Nos vemos. Hasta luego.